surveying the storm damage. We're getting a better look at the problems our recent showers brought. She's 79 and feeling fine. Meet the woman who is going for her fifth Guinness World Record. Hello everyone, welcome to The Rundown. I'm Robin Winston in Corona. Some people in this neighborhood are under evacuation orders after this retaining wall collapsed. Eight homes were affected here near San Diego Drive and two of them were red tagged. At least 20 people are now without a place to live. They're waiting to find out when they'll be allowed to return to their homes. Over in Chatsworth, a sinkhole that opened up about a week ago is still growing. It's now about 50 feet long and 40 feet deep. Crews tell us there's no timeline for the repairs. A sewer line, a water pipe, and a utility phone line all have to be moved before they can start. Over to California's central coast, almost a dozen homes are now evacuated because of a mudslide in Berkeley. A river of dirt and debris washed right up to the homes Monday morning. Some of the mud actually made its way inside. President Biden is traveling to the area on Thursday to survey the neighborhoods impacted by the recent storms. And another major problem left behind by the recent storms, this is Highway 33 partially washed away in Ventura County. This stretches between Fairview Road in Ojai and the Ozina Fire Station in Los Padres National Forest. The highway is closed in both directions. The recent storm has a lot of people excited to check out the fresh snow in the mountains, but road conditions can still be tricky, so be careful and be prepared. This is what we don't want to see as heavy wet snow continue to fall Tuesday morning in Wrightwood. You can see the tires spinning on this SUV as three people try to push it from behind. Chains are required if you're driving in the San Gabriel Mountains. And check this out, Bear Valley got so much snow, some people have to be creative to just get out of their front doors. Bear Valley, which is located between Lake Tahoe and Yosemite, reported six feet of snow in 72 hours. The resort is entirely closed while crews work to dig out. Bear Valley Unified School District sent out an email to parents declaring Tuesday a snow day. Are we done with all the rain and the snow? That's a big question, right? Or is there more on the way? Meteorologist Stephanie Olmo is here to let us know what to expect. Hello everyone, we are dealing with a much quieter weather pattern. Fortunately, we've been dealing with back-to-back -back storms. It actually is very beneficial, but it's also caused its fair share of issues. All right, this last one continues to work its way out toward the east, so it's departing. High pressure system building off to the west, briefly moving in. I say briefly because we have another disturbance north of there that is set to move in. All right, the chance of rain for LA goes up as we head into Thursday, very slight. So this next storm system not bringing a whole lot of activity. So let's fast forward here Thursday. We can expect some pop up activities some pop up showers here and there cold enough up in the higher elevations. We could see some snow showers not expected to see widespread activity just pretty much spotty to scatter throughout the day. A much better picture as we head into Thursday night and looking a lot better as we head into the weekend with plenty of sunshine. Back to you. A mother was given the worst possible news following a hit and run that killed her teenage son last week. Her second son, who was just a toddler and was injured in the crash, has also died. Debbie Amaya held a visual for her two boys Monday night. She was just released from the hospital herself. They were in an accident last Monday in South LA when a speeding car hit their SUV, trapping the family inside. The driver of the other car just ran off. Amaya was in the front seat along with her 16-year-old daughter. Her two sons, a 13-year-old and an 18-month-old, were sitting in the back seat. They both died in the days following the accident. A mom should never bury their children. And it hurts me so bad that I didn't lose just one, I lost two of my sons. So far, no arrests, but there were multiple witnesses and this surveillance video, which police hope will help. An Inland Empire community is honoring a Riverside County deputy who was killed in the line of duty. After Deputy Darnell Calhoun's tragic death, people have been showing up to his family's restaurant in Marietta to pay their respects. Friends and neighbors say their hearts are breaking for the Calhoun family. They've been our neighbor for over 12 years over there, and they're, they're like family to us. They're family to the whole community. They, they consider all their customers family, and they're just an amazing, loving group of people over there. The 30-year-old was shot and killed last week while responding to a domestic violence and child custody call. Deputy Calhoun left behind a pregnant wife and two young sons. 
A man in Indiana has been charged with child neglect after his very young son got a hold of a loaded handgun. The incident captured on security video. Well, you can see the toddler in diapers right there playing with that loaded weapon, waving and pointing it as he wanders alone in the hallway of an apartment complex. He even pulls the trigger at one point. Police say it was a 9 millimeter handgun with 15 rounds in the magazine. The child lives with his mother and was returned to her. Police in Baldwin Park say they need your help finding a shoplifter who knocked down a woman while he was trying to get away. So watch as the man walks out of a store called Urban X on Ramona Boulevard back on January 6. When a store employee notices, she tries to stop him. That's when he drags her to the ground while trying to get away. Now, if you have any information on this incident or recognize this man, you're urged to call Baldwin Park Police. Celebrations to remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. happened all across the country Monday. Here in Los Angeles, a big welcome back for the Kingdom Day Parade. Marching bands, floats, and vehicles from local organizations were all part of the celebration. So were NBC4's Michael Brownlee, Melissa McGee, Michelle Baez, and our Telemundo 52 partners. Also there, new mayor of Los Angeles, Karen Bass, who is the first black woman to hold the office. But it's wonderful to be out here, so glad the sun is shining, and it's just great to see people out celebrating Dr. King's legacy, but remembering what it is that we need to do. We have a lot of work to do in the city. I am one of the biggest Martin Luther King fans ever. I think he is one of our American heroes, uh, made such a huge difference in the way we are today, but it also reminds us we have some work to do. The theme of this year's parade was America, the best hope of the world. If you're still having trouble finding children's pain and fever reducers, try Walgreens. The pharmacy announced they have improved their over-the-counter stock and have now removed limits set for online purchases. The limits were first issued at the start of the winter when flu, RSV, and COVID cases were spiking. The United States is expected to hit the debt ceiling this week. We're not going to see an impact right away, but this is expected to set up a showdown in Washington in the coming weeks and months. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy says Republicans are open to negotiations, but the White House says they're not negotiating on the debt ceiling. In the meantime, the Treasury Department can manage cash flow for a while, but at some point it will have a tough time paying for obligations like Social Security and Medicare. After our recent winter storms, there's hope that this spring will bring a stunning wildflower season. Some are saying there could even be a super bloom. I can't wait to see that. The Death Valley Natural History Association is cautiously optimistic about the wildflower forecast, saying there could be an average to above average bloom this spring. Wildflowers can start popping up as early as January. While it's hard to pinpoint the peak times, super blooms typically reach the high point around early to mid-March. We'll be waiting. $439 million is now up for grabs, folks. No one matched all six numbers in Monday night's Powerball drawing. Those numbers were, are you ready? 4, 14, 33, 39, 61, and 3. Check your wallets. The next drawing is Wednesday night. Keep playing. We got to have some good luck at some point, right? I'm just going to keep trying. All right, we want to tell you about a remarkable Beverly Hills woman, a 79 year old Guinness World Record holder, and she says rope is dope. Time to start moving your body. Let's stretch. Get up and get up, everybody. Oh, I love her. That's Annie Judas, a.k.a. Jean Bell. In just a couple of weeks from now, she will be trying for her fifth Guinness World Record in rope skipping. Can you believe it? Yes, her fifth. She says she cannot believe she's turning 80 in November, but she feels blessed to be able to move her body and stretch. And here's another fun fact. She was a Playboy Playmate of the Year back in the 1960s. I just want to look that good when I'm her age. She's definitely an inspiration. You can always get news and weather updates on the NBCLA app and our website, NBCLA.com. And be sure to tune into Today in LA on NBC4 weekdays from 4 to 7 a.m. I'll be helping you get around with the traffic reports throughout the morning. I'll see you next time on The Rundown.